Which post-emerge herbicide should you use in your soybeans if they are conventional beans? Oh, and by the way, your Roundup beans? Well, they're pretty much conventional beans now too if you have Roundup-resistant kochia or water hemp or ragweed or mare's tail or a number of these other resistant weeds. So you got to start thinking about what else can you throw in that tank to get those weeds under control. The other thing with a lot of these traits is they run out at R1 or maybe R2. You have to check the label well, they based don't on the run trait out. that you're. It's just that's the latest you can spray. Spray that particular herbicide. So after that point, if you're still spraying or you have a late weed flush, you're going to need one of these conventional products. Well, you do, but this if is if they're the, labeled. That's right. And the reason why we're talking about this today is Flexstar, for example. That's one of the most popular post-emerge soybean herbicides today. It's great, we love it. It's cheap and everything, has residual, that's all nice. But the problem is, it's a 10 month rotational restriction to corn. All right, so the question gets to be, well, how far do I push these things? And you know what, it's really tough to know. You have to follow the label, absolutely. But maybe you're right at the border and you say, you know, uh, I'm probably gonna be 10 months and a week later planting. How, what would be a condition that would cause me problems? You know, when you look at herbicide breakdown, we want good microbial activity in the soil. So if we've got our soil in balance, our pH is in line, we're not crazy high, we're not crazy low, uh, and then we look at moisture conditions and heat. If we get plentiful heat and plentiful moisture, we've got great microbial conditions, herbicides should break down like they normally are expected to. That's right, but heat is number one. So I just want you to think about if you're in northern North Dakota versus if you're in Arkansas, well, who gets more heat? Obviously, in Arkansas, you're going to break down herbicide a lot faster, which is why, for example, on the Flexstar label, you're going to see that, you know what, you can use a higher rate and still rotate to corn 10 months later if you're in the south in a warmer area. All right, the other thing you have to think about is just residual control. Maybe you aren't running up against a window where I can't plant again. Maybe the planting rotation is a little bit less, but you've got a product that you know has good, strong residual. For example, let's look at Pursuit or Raptor. They've got some good soil residual to them, which is one of the real pluses for using those products for weed control. The challenge is in low pH soils, they have a tough time breaking down. So where the full rate may be four ounces for pursuit, if you've got a low pH soil, you may not want to push more than a half a rate out there just to not take any chances at dinging up next year's crop. Or same thing if you've got a short growing season. So you got to think a lot about rate. Classic is another product that, you know what, in the wrong pH situation, it's not good. But it's the opposite of pursuit. It's high pH where we have a problem with classic. So here again, we just really encourage you take a look at all these different soybean herbicides you can use and look at rotational restrictions. It all depends on what crop you want to plant next year for these residual herbicides. Perhaps the biggest challenge with all these products, Brian, is that they aren't Roundup. They aren't even Liberty. They aren't even Extendamax or Ingenia. They are products that only work on just a couple of weeds out in the field and you've got half a dozen different kinds of weeds that there's no product that gets every single one of them. So how do you choose which product to use? What you always wanna do is start with, hey, what's my worst weed problem? Get that under control first and then spray when the weeds are small. Also, you have to get great spray coverage. So this is one of the reasons why we talk about using pre-emerge herbicides. You gotta thin the weeds out a little bit. If you've got solid weeds out there and you're trying to get great spray coverage, how about the weeds that are underneath the weeds you're killing? A lot of times in thick weed areas, you don't get everything under control. All right, let's take the worst weeds, pick the best products. Okay. Pigweed. Probably Flexstar, but you got to do it early. After another week or two here, then you're down to Cobra. Okay, how about Kochia? Cobra. It's not great, but that's the best. Wild buckwheat. Wild buckwheat, I'd say probably Pursuit. How about Cockleburr and Sunflower? Uh, probably First Rate, what do you think? I like First Rate the best. How about Yellow Nut Sedge? That's where I'd go Bassagran. How about Canada Thistle if you can't use Roundup? <laughs> also Bassagran, that's probably why you mentioned Canada Thistle right after All right, here's, here's another one for Bassagran, <laughs> Brian. Venus Mallow, that's probably yep. the best one too. So, yep. I mean, there's some that you have to think about that, hey, I'd never use Bassagran, but if you had those weeds, you might consider it. Right. Uh, the other thing that I'm thinking about, Brian. Uh, Wait, we... no, I got more weeds. I got some for you, lambs quarters. Uh, that you use Harass, the generic pinnacle. Okay, common ragweed. 
Well, ragweed I like first rate as long as it's not ALS resistant. If it is, then I like Flexstar. Yep, and if it's too late for Flexstar, then you go to Cobra, and that's where this all gets complicated. Okay, how about tank mixing? Can I throw Cobra in together with Flexstar to burners? No, it gets way too hot. You don't want to do that. The same thing like with your pre's. You don't want to use Valor with Authority. It gets too hot and hard on the plants. Just pick one or the other. If you're going to use Cobra, go up to that 12 and a half ounce rate and just hit it hard. All right, and what do you do if you've got two products you're putting together? One says surfactant, the other says crop oil. What do you use for an adjuvant? Well, you, you have to use a judgment call here. If it's 90 degrees, I'm going adjuvant. If it's you know, a really nice day at 75 degrees and sunny, you then might you might use the oil, oil or you could cut the oil back. Instead of using a quart per acre, maybe use a gallon per hundred and try and lessen the impact of that oil. Okay, one of the things with Roundup, let's say it's in Roundup Ready Soybeans, and right in the Roundup label it says, don't use crop oil, you should use surfactant, but you know what, we're seeing better results with crop oil, then what do you do? Ask your agronomist, because uh, my agronomist says, use oil. That's the best. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, and here's the thing. You have to look at what the chemical manufacturers after. You don't want to do anything that voids uh, your product guarantees, those kinds of things. But you want to make sure the product works. You don't have to be back out there. And a lot of times the surfactant makes a huge difference. So make sure that you're using the right ones. Well, once again, we just really encourage you, get your weeds under control. That's how you maximize yield and get those weeds killed when they're small. If Roundup isn't working, throw something else in with that Roundup. There are still plenty of options, it's just they work a lot better when you get good coverage and you kill the weed when it's small. One of the weeds we didn't cover is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up later in the show.